In this video, we will look at the dry and damp principles in the context of testing. So basically, we are talking about removing duplication and increasing readability. We will see why people consider these principles contradicting when writing tests and how you can achieve both. Dry and damp are principles that target two different aspects of maintainability. Both aim at making the code easier to change. Dry stands for don't repeat yourself and means that any piece of system knowledge should have only one representation. People often take dry to mean that you shouldn't duplicate code, but it extends to far more than just that. Things that are not conceptually related should not be related. A change to one thing should not cause another to change. You want to minimize coupling between unrelated things. The dry principle increases maintainability by isolating the risk of change to smaller pieces. DAMP stands for descriptive and meaningful phrases and promotes the readability of the code. Making the code more readable makes it easier to understand. When the code is easier to understand, it's easier to maintain it. The DAMP principle increases maintainability by reducing the time needed to read and understand the code. You might have heard people saying that the duplication is more acceptable in tests. You might also have heard that tests should be damp and not dry. What does this mean in practice? Let's take a look at an example. Please keep in mind that the example is very simple and the illustrated problems would be much worse with more code. So in this test we are creating some tasks, setting a title for them, setting their status and giving the task an assignee. Then we are operating on the task somehow and finally checking that the task status and assignee has been changed accordingly. Arguably, we have quite a bit of duplication going on in the construction. Quite often, in an attempt to remove the duplication, you see the following kind of solution. So here we have introduced a couple of static constants so that we are not repeating the title, status or the assignee ID. The problem with a solution like this is that now you have coupling between tests. Changing something in the setup will affect all the tests. If you change the title, status or the assignee, that will affect all the tests. I believe that code like this is often the result of static analyzers complaining about the duplication. Tools like SonarCube will even suggest introducing a constant for the string literal. So what would happen if we tried to remove the code duplication by moving it to another method? Here we have added before each method that constructs task. So the task is basically constructed in one place. Removing duplication like this reduces the readability. Before the change you had all the details to understand the test inside the test. Now that the details are hidden in the setup method. Also, variation in test data setup now becomes a problem. Let's say we have to add another test for starting the progress on an open task. A very naive implementation would modify the test data locally in the test. The change makes it even worse because now the setup has been divided into two places. The construction happens in the test lifecycle method and we then partially set the data in the test method. Looking at examples like this, it feels like increasing dry will reduce damp and the other way around. From this perspective, it makes sense to favor dry in production code and damp in test. Let's take a small step back and look at the definition of dry again. What does it mean that any piece of system knowledge should have only one representation? What exactly is system knowledge in the context of tests? Tests usually follow the arrange, act, assert pattern. You might first construct some objects, interact with those objects and check the results. Your tests have knowledge about how to implement these steps. According to DRY, 
such knowledge should have only one representation. On the other hand, what does damp mean in the context of tests? It merely means that you would like to see and understand at one glance what happens in the test. The most important information is what each step does, not how it's implemented. Descriptive can refer to the purpose and meaningful can refer to the relevance. If we move any test steps somewhere else, we will not reuse this knowledge but remove it from the test. It still does the same thing, but knowledge is now indirect. Let's think about the previous task construction example. When we move the construction to before it, the construction knowledge is not available inside the test. Thinking in terms of system knowledge, we would like to apply dry to how to implement something. Same way we would like to use damp to describe what steps to take. The construction of an object in the example is what. How to construct that object is how. We want to be expressive about the what and remove duplication around the how. Putting dry and damp in this perspective, the two things are not contradictory but complementary. The test data builder pattern allows tests to specify only those parts of the objects that need to vary and use sensible defaults for those not relevant to the test. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a builder class that builds tasks. The builder knows how to construct objects. The knowledge has only one representation. This knowledge is available from the tests in a descriptive way. Let's take a look at how to use a builder in a test. Calling the builder in the test tells us in a descriptive way what are we going to do. And the details of how to do that have been hidden inside the build. The construction is now also reusable. You could say that this is much more descriptive than the original version. By moving the object construction knowledge into a builder class, we have achieved both dry and damp. In our example, there is still some duplication in the way we are asserting results. One way to remove this duplication while adding readability at the same time is to write custom assertions. I'm using assert j here, but you could write something like hamcrest matches as well. Here we have a custom assertion class that knows how to assert the state of the task. Now we can use the custom assertions together with our test data builders in the test. Calling the custom assertions tells us in a descriptive way what are we going to do. And the details about how to do it have been hidden inside the assertion implementation. The assertion is now also reusable. The result is very readable, it's fast to understand, and there is close to no duplication at all. We now follow both the dry and damp principles very well. Dry and damp in tests are not contradictory, but they target two different aspects of maintainability. To achieve both, we should extract the steps about how to do something and name those descriptively to express what they do. A couple of patterns that help with both concerns are test data builders and custom assertions. These patterns remove duplication in construction and verification while providing better readability and expressiveness. That's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and all of that if you found any of this useful. Stay curious and see you in the next video.